So you've come here for the truth. Well, we've got the truth and nothing but the truth. Here are your hosts, Robert A. Bianchi and David J. Bruno. Welcome to WMTR Radio's Nothing But The Truth with your host Bob Bianchi and Dave Bruno. We are a show about mindset, Dave. We have Ipa Roche with us. She is somebody that we met at the Mega Success event with JT Fox. Incredibly impressive businesswoman, uh, professional, personal life, everything is just really interesting. So uh, Dave, why don't you just break down for our audience what Aoife, who Ipa is and what she does. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Um, I, I remember meeting Aoife at Mega Success, and, and, and right away we were talking about marketing. Mm. We were talking, because that's really, I, I'm so interested in marketing, pivoting for, off of COVID and learning about digital ads and funnels and landing pages and lead magnets. And Aoife speaks the language. I mean, she's got a marketing company um, that is called Attention Grabbers. And she has a fitness brand. Uh, she's a fitness model. And she's an author, too. And uh, I'm going to save the book uh, for the second half after the commercial. And the book is How to Think Yourself Attractive. And I cannot wait to hear how um, we could actually think ourselves attractive. But first wait, things did, first. Wait, didn't it also say, let me look at this, because didn't it say like 50 ways? 50 ways. 50 ways. Because I got 49. And I'm, I'm looking for that one, <laughs> that one I'm missing, to, ha- to achieve complete perfection. Dave. I think we all could use 50 <laughs> new ways to think ourselves attractive. But that's to come. We appreciate you being here on Nothing But The Truth. And first and foremost, tell our audience a little bit more about you, Aoife. Um, guys, thanks so much for inviting me on. This is an absolute pleasure. So my name is, as you've mentioned, Aoife Roach. Um, I'm Irish. So I have just recently relocated from Ireland to the U.S. to bring the marketing agency from originally we started as an Irish company and then I was in the U.K. and now we are launching Full Throttle in Los Angeles. So that's very, very exciting. Um, I have a background in, I I started in corporate like most people do, built my way up the corporate ladder and um, realized in 2018 that I didn't want to be in corporate anymore, so decided to become an entrepreneur and a fitness model at the same time. A lot of people thought I was a bit crazy. But that, um, and that's really over the last couple of years where all of my focus has been on one, on the fitness and building the body, and then on the mindset of building the business. Those two things, and they're so interrelated. I would find them hard to separate right now because the connection between the business and the body, the same discipline goes into building both. So I kind of, you know, that's one thing that I feel is kind of unique about what I, what I kind of, you know, when people see me on social media, they don't know sometimes, is she a fitness, fitness model or is she a business woman? And I'm like, I'm both. Unbelievable. The discipline, the discipline to succeed in business and also fitness. Explain the discipline. Why is it so important and what type of discipline are you talking about? Yeah, because, well, especially when it comes to, so I compete, I won, I won the world title in Ireland, I won the world title in the UK, and I'm, I'm humming and hawing about maybe going for the world title in Vegas in August. I, I, if I could do, if I could get three world titles, I think I'll, I'll be happy. But I think I said that after the UK one, so I don't know if we're ever happy. And I think that is the point. When you are really invested in, like, if I look at my fitness journey, there's a couple of key ingredients that need to go into that for me to take it to that level. And the first one is consistency, right? Your results are a direct reflection of your effort, especially when it comes to fitness and with, you know, the modeling. Then it comes to the discipline. So the structure that you have to put in place in order for you to create the time to go to the gym, to work out. Um, And then it's also about the mindset of believing in yourself that you're capable of doing it. Like I went from being a vice president of Barclays Bank to being in the boardroom to being um, in a bikini within six months. I think LinkedIn had thought I had lost my mind, that I was having some sort of midlife crisis. (laughs) They were like, what is she doing? But what I 
what I realized was that I wanted to follow what was true for me and what was pa- what was passionate for me, and I applied that mindset to that willingness to want to win, and the dedication, the consistency, and the effort, and I put that into the fitness, and that's what returned the results. And then now, when what I do with the business, I leverage the exact same things. You've got to be consistent. You've got to have discipline. You've got to get results. Um, and that's how I leverage both of them um, to get me to where I want to go. And like I told the client, said, "What do you bring to the table that's different from other marketing agencies?" I, I I help my clients to win. That's what I do. My mindset is so focused on winning in every single arena. That's what I bring to the table. We are going to win together. Mm. If I, I'm curious uh, that you let's go to that mindset piece for a second. Um, so if I'm hearing you right, um, you're not just helping people with their marketing. You you also see it as an integral part of your business, which I think is kind of unique. If I heard this correct is that you're also talking to your, uh, to your clients about their mindset. Because I think that most marketers just basically go in and push the buttons, turn the wheel, tell them to do this, that, and the other, and walk out the door. Talk to me a little bit more about uh, that, that very unique aspect of what you're doing. Yeah, so all of my um, clients that I work with now is we've kind of moved into more higher ticket. I meet with every single one of them every single week for at least half an hour to an hour to actually, with the business owner, because... What is not, it's not always the process or the structure that's in the way. It's the belief that you're capable of taking your business to the next level. It's the confidence that you're able to take it to the next level. And often people aren't surrounded all the time by people who are supporting them. You know, you can get, have some negative feedback from my family and friends. You're spending too much time doing this. You're spending too much time doing that. So what I try to do with my business owners is I look at and I listen very intently to the dialogue. What are the sort of cognitive biases that they have that I see is holding them back? For example, you know, they oh, I'm not very good at sales. I'm not, is that really true? Or is that a story that you're telling yourself? Mm. I'm not confident on video. I don't like to video. Why would anyone want to listen to me? So when you're growing a business, especially now, right? Everything is video marketing. You've got to be putting yourself out there. And you, as a business owner, you absolutely have to be so anchored in your own self-confidence that you can show up on TikTok, you can show up on LinkedIn, you can show up wherever it is, and that people buy into you because you're confident and you're competent. And that is all rooted in the mindset. I can be the best marketer in the world, but if I put sales into a business and my business owner can't convert or he can't have a conversation with someone because he lacks confidence, it's not going to work. So I think, you, you know, really good marketers understand that the business owner and the relationship with building the business owner's confidence is as important as the marketing strategy itself. I mean, have you, have you ever encountered a situation? It's, it's funny you mention this because I, I always think of the story when I was <clears throat> a young lawyer getting ready to try my first case. And I asked my father to give me like the number one tip to be a great lawyer, my dad being a lawyer, great trial lawyer himself. And he said, you know, kid, you were going to be a great lawyer when you were five years old. The rest was just a process, going to college, going to law school. It's who you are as a person that's going to make you a great lawyer. So I I kind of, when you're saying what you're saying there, uh, have you ever consulted a client to say, look, I I could do all the marketing stuff for you that I can, but your mindset is just not in the right place to succeed and the marketing will fail. Has that ever happened? Yeah. Like, and one of the biggest challenges that we come across, and I was even dealing with this earlier today is a scarcity mindset. So where, you know, cause it like paid social, you have to invest quite heavily in paid social now, whether you're investing in your Google ads, your TikTok ads. And then when they're coming at it with a scarcity mindset of not wanting to put the budget in, then the results don't come out. And you've got to really, like, I, I'm brutally honest. I, I think it's a bit of an Irish thing as well. I think people find me quite direct. But that's just how, like, that's how I was kind of raised, to be very direct and tell people the truth. And if I see someone 
who's operating from a scarcity mindset, or I see them deliberately doing things that's sabotaging, like procrastination being another one. Um, you know, I have clients who don't do what I ask them to do, and I challenge them on that. I'm like, you said you were going to do this for me. You haven't done it. Why haven't you done it? Why not? You know what I mean? And often it's because they lack that confidence in their own ability to be able to deliver. And I guess that's kind of where we put in that supporting structure and the accountability to say, you know, you've committed to me, we're invested, we've made an agreement. So if we're not going to do this for you, you're going to do this for me and you're still going to get the result. Wow, that scarcity point that you just made just brings me back to pre-COVID for Bob and I. I mean, we were two. We were just two of us. And to your point, you need to spend on payroll to grow and delegate, right? And the paid ads, the, the advertising. I think that the success of a company, you could look to their balance sheet and you could look to the profit and loss statement and go right to marketing and payroll. To me, I think those are the keys to success. And we only learned that, unfortunately, after the courthouse is closed and the phone stopped ringing at the Bianchi Law Group. That's, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if, uh, the, that everybody in a business has to make a decision to make a calculated risk at a certain point in time if you're going to scale. Um, and you don't do it recklessly. Uh, but in times where there's difficulties like in COVID, there's always opportunities. Can you speak to that? Yeah, and, and again, like going back to our point, that is a mindset. You know, it is what are you looking for? Because your focus of it, wherever your focus, where attention, it's one of actually, it's a chapter in my book, and it says, where attention goes, energy flows. And you are going to see what you are looking for. So when you, you, if you get up and you're like, all of the ways that something is not working, you're going to get shown more of that. If you can focus your attention, now things can go wrong, which they inevitably do. They go wrong all of the time. But it's your relationship to being able to get back on track quickly. And that comes down to your mindset and being 100% anchored in the end result of what you actually want to create. So when we like you know, wake up, and yeah, you know, I've had several challenges, you know, with the like um, moving to the US, trying to do the visa, the whole process, trying to do it on my own has been really challenging. But never for one second have I let go of the vision that I was going to get this granted. Not not for one second. I think that is uh, in business. You've got to set your goals, make your plans and be like, this is what we're going for. And we're going to aim high because even if we don't get there, we're still going to get, we're going to do quite well. And I think that all is anchored down into the internal dialogue that you have with yourself, the internal dialogue that you have with your team members and who are you surrounding yourself by? Because, you know, the energy of the people and the vibration of the people that are around you, it matters because you get it by osmosis. If you surround yourself by positive, wealthy, goal-driven people, you're going to become a positive, wealthy, goal-driven person. If you surround yourself by people who are naysayers, it can't be done, it's negative, it's not going to work, guess what? It's not going to work. So, you know, and I think that's a, that's a really... Most people don't realize the impact that their environment has on their mindset and how important it is to keep that environment super clean, even if it means you have to spend a lot of time on your own. Wow, wow. excellent, excellent. Mind excellent. blowing. Mind will drop in the wisdom. I'm All right, spitting fire. Yeah, we got to take a quick break here. We're going to be back more with Aoife on the other side. You're listening to WMTR Radio's Nothing But the Truth with Bob Bianchi and Dave Bruno. We'll be right back. At the Bianchi Law Group, our team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys specialize in criminal defense and domestic violence cases. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, call the Bianchi Law Group today. Welcome to WMTR Radio's Nothing But the Truth. Ruth, we are back with Ifa. Let's let's follow up with some of that wisdom dropping from that last segment about mindset and things. And I was I just took a qu couple quick notes that I wanted you to talk about um, the internal dialogue. I, I think that this is so key. We all have one, and a lot of times it can be negative. And I make at least personally a conscious effort. Uh, when I go into that space personally to start thinking about something that I'm grateful for and literally telling myself, stop thinking that 
Uh, your thoughts are not real, okay? You're just finding excuses to, to be miserable or whatever you want to say. And and I literally identify it. I literally identify this is going on in my head. This is what I'm saying. It's not true. The thought itself is not true. And, and you know, Aoife, I want you to, to get more into that negative self-talk that we have and how we can convert it into positive self-talk and be realistic. But you also mentioned getting back on track. Which by definition means we all get off track. We all have setbacks. I, I think there's a, a, a cultural thing, Aoife, where people think that, well, everyone else's life is perfect and I'm the only one having these problems and uh, I can't recover from this negative situation. So can you talk to me a little bit more about the importance of the internal dialogue, self-talk and getting back on track? Yeah, so what you said there is really, really interesting. And it's, you know, it brings about a level of awareness where you become the observer. And the minute you become the observer, you know that you're on a good path because now you're, see, you become the witnesser of the behavior of the dialogue. Now, what tends to happen is most people don't even know there's a dialogue going on. It's just so conditioned to speak to themselves negative, to get up in the morning, can look in the mirror, I don't look good, I don't, I'm overweight, I don't do this, da, da, da. I, go, I don't like my job, I don't like my husband, I don't like my wife, I don't like my kids. And there's all of this dialogue that goes on just so unconsciously that they don't pay attention. But when you can start to become the observer, then okay, here's a thought pattern that I see recurring. Now, where is that coming from? And you start to kind of poke around in the reasons why, you know, like, for example, I often in the fitness world, I deal with a lot of people who have body dysmorphia, you know, and it can be, we can, you can be the fittest, most like esteemed fitness model and have the lowest self-confidence because the, the, the training can be born out of a natural tendency to oscillate. Um, and when what you find when you kind of sit down and talk to them, they were maybe bullied as children, they were name calling, that they had some poor internal dialogue with the childhood. And that is just that negative down, the dialogue has followed them along. So I think, you know, a way that we need to work as humans and as individuals, we need to start to question, one, what are we telling ourselves? And two, what are we believing? And ask yourself, well, okay, is that actually true? Is my life really that bad? Do I really hate my job? Or, I, you know, and you start questioning the, the dialogue. And the moment that you start questioning, you go from being the participant to the observer. And that's where you get real personal power with self-awareness. Because you can start to identify the dysfunctions of your behavior. And you can, you can only make changes once you bring an awareness to it. And once you have an awareness to it, you can't unsee it. That's the thing. You mm -hmm. can see then how that dialogue is playing out. And that, so that's kind of one of the biggest step that I think. And then with the, the idea of getting back on track is first acknowledging that you've gone off track. Right. That's too fair. <laughs> you know, and being, being honest with yourself, not hiding. Being like, you know what? I made a mess of this. Yeah, I think I've had a setback and I'm not feeling good or I'm, I'm acknowledging that because the more you resist something, the more it persists. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you can actually just go, you know what I mean? This is what's happened. It's a bad situation that, that I'm in, but I know I can get myself out of this. I may not know how, but I know that I can. And then just taking the obvious next step. What too many people do is they like think it should all be better immediately. It's not going to be better immediately. If you have a setback, you have a setback and it's going to take you a little bit of time to dust yourself off. Your feelings might be hurt. There might be some emotion involved, but you can do it. You just need to, you know, go back, lick your wounds for a little bit, whatever it is, and then get back out, put your best dress on and back out into the world again. Well, yeah, I just a follow up before Dave goes, uh, you know, I think that there's, also a maturity that comes through living life where you realize that some of the darkest times and some of the times where you didn't know where you were going to go ultimately turn out to be growth periods where if you keep hope hope as part of your inner core 
and you work through the issue, you look back on it and like, wow, my life would have been is so much better now and it would not have been had I just stayed in the comfort zone and, and didn't push myself like you did when you left the corporate world to, to put on a bikini and get on a stage, which I imagine is not a, uh, a very, uh, you know, it's, it's rough, right? But, but you pushed yourself out, like, even though that may have seemed maybe dark or not, when I say dark or challenging or whatever, it's okay, is my point. It's okay. The, the worst part of life is saying, I wish I had done it, but I didn't. And I, I think, you know, because the, when I did that, and it was kind of a little bit, because I'm so goal-orientated, and I, I, you know, I was kind of very much in the wind, and I didn't allow the, the kind of the noise, but like that brought up a lot of things. So I would have always been conditioned, don't be a show-off, don't get too big for your boots, you know, don't, you know, don't be boastful, don't be, so to go and say, well, I think I'm actually going to give taking this fitness model as a professional. I think I can be the best was a huge sort of transitory period for me to be able to, because I wasn't, I was a little bit supported, but not massively because people were like, it's damaging your credibility. No one's going to take you seriously. People won't want to do business with you. You know, but I was like, no, I'm going to stay true to the end result of what I want to do. And I think that that, you know, if had I not had, like you talked about the maturity and the experience, I, that could have derailed, that dialogue could have derailed me very, very easily. And I, I did actually want to quit once or twice. And I thought about quitting, I think, once before my last UK show. And I actually messaged JT and I was like, I'm going to quit. And he was like, you're not quitting <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's so important to have people in the background that are supporting you as well to that when you do get derailed or you do feel like quitting that you have that the team behind you that's going to support you that's all just super important wow oh, awesome you know yeah i think i agree that that confidence is key confidence in business the mindset and we have author you're an author here of the book how to think yourself attractive 50 ways to think yourself more attractive. So I think it goes hand in hand, right? That confidence, thinking yourself attractive. Um, what are the big takeaways from the book that, uh, that, that we could learn? Yeah, so a, a lot of people thought in the beginning when I wrote that book that I was talking about physical attractiveness. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's the thesis and the antithesis of the book. People think that attractiveness is physical, but attractiveness is mental. Mm. The more that you are um your mindset is thinking attractively i in the book i talk about this idea of a thinking engine so you can fuel it full of what your wants desires goals or results that you want and then that's what you're going to get more of or you can fuel your thinking engine full of you know negative self-talk dialogue all of the reasons why things cannot work and the outcome is determined by the expectation so what the book does is it basically talks about 50, there's 50 sort of nuggets of um, like one-liners built out with paragraphs of different things that you can think about on a daily basis with regard, you know, like the outcome is determined by the expectation would be one of the chapters in the book. And that lends itself to the point that if you're going into something and you're like, this isn't going to work, guess what? You're probably right. You know what I mean? And those sort of like, I, what I wanted to do was create something that people could just literally pick up and delve into it. And then I said, read the book in its entirety once and then go back and read one premise every single day and work to implement that premise. And if you can do that, you will slowly and gradually shift your mindset. And the more attractive you start to think, the more attractive you become to other people. And that's the kind of the irony of it, really, that, you know, you're, you're, you create your own reality. Uh, but you've got to, you know, the, the, what we see on the outside is just a projection of the design on the inside. And it's knowing that, it, you know, I can fine-tune the design on the inside. If, if my reality doesn't match what I'm you know, want, I have the power and the control just by changing the way that I think so I can change the data that's being projected on the outside. That, that's, that's deep and very so true that your reality is your perception. 
Um, and, and if you change your perception, you can change your reality. I think that's. I think it's because we come in a culture where, and I'm curious of your thoughts on this, where there's such conformity that it, it, it kind of hampers your ability to create your own reality. Do, do you see that? Like, You have to conform. You have to be part of society. But it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be defined by them as opposed to yourself defining yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like the only limitations we have are the definitions that we put in our own mind. So, of course, there are, you know, social norms, etiquettes. We have to play by the rules. You know, we, like we, none of us wants to be ostracized from the group, right? We don't want to be so different that no one wants to be around us. But it's also the, there's a fine balance between that. And how much of that conditioning do you allow to be overlaid on your definitions? Because your definition of success is determined by you. Your definition of how successful you can be is determined by you, not by anybody else. Mm. So the you know the if if you look at like the most successful people that are making the most amount of money, they did things that people were like, no one can do that. It's like the four minute mile, no one can do that. And then the minute that he did it, you know, then a couple of weeks later, someone else broke it, and someone else broke it. So it's got to you've got to really look at what are your definitions that you're creating because your definition is creating your reality right now. If you're at a ceiling cap in your business, it's because you that's where you think, your that's where your mindset is at. The minute, like I did a, a test recently with a price change and it was quite a dramatic price change in something that I did. And then I went out and I pitched it and I got like, I got two deals almost immediately. And I realized the problem wasn't with the value that I was offering. I just wasn't, pricing myself for what I was really worth. And then the minute I decided, no, I'm worth that, then the universe said, yeah, there you go. And then I closed the deal. So you've got to be really kind of like a detective to be like, what are the definitions that I'm overlaying on my reality and how is that limiting me? And then slowly peel them off one by one. Wow. Self-awareness and objectively looking at yourself from the outside, looking in about what is bringing it down. Dave, uh, we have got to go. This is some massive wisdom. Greatly appreciated. And we're so uh, proud that we met you and that you're friends uh, with us and you came on the show. This is WMTR Radio's Nothing But The Truth every Saturday at 1030. Dave, let's talk about the podcast. Every Saturday at 1030 on WMTR. We're proud uh, to have the show there. But also, we're filming video right now with Aoife. And uh, that will drop on Wednesday. The landing page is nothingbutthetruthpodcast.com. It's also the, in podcast form. That's going to be in iTunes and Spotify. Uh, Aoife, great job. A lot of great takeaways. We appreciate you for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you too. I love what you're doing. This. You're really adding value. Yeah, I definitely am you know, massively open to connecting and seeing what we can do together. And let's just all win together, right? That's, that's how I feel. Amen. Love it. <laughs> all right, Eva, we'll be in touch. All right, thanks so much, guys. Have a lovely afternoon. The Bianchi Law Group, a team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys. But here's the thing. He put himself in a box when he said... My relied on by CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, Law and Crime, and news leaders across the country for our criminal defense expertise. In a search warrant, you have to have probable cause that a crime's been committed and there's evidence in a particular place. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, call the Bianchi Law Group today.